eyes of the Lord run to and fro upon the face of the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. If you'll really study that in Hebrew, what he's saying is this, people's hearts that are agreeing with him. Now this morning we're talking about who our Heavenly Father really is. And the fact of the matter that even though we're living in the New Covenant, the New Testament, we're at the end of the ages, uh, I, I, there, there so seems to me a real lack of understanding who God really is. And there really is no excuse for this because we, we've got the New Testament. And, and, and really the greatest revelation of the Father is revealed through the Son. He's the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. And, 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 and you know, and, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And God's original plan, you all go all the way back to Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28, and, and the whole, the whole kit caboodle, as we say in Wisconsin, the whole shebang, is wrapped up in this. Let us make man in our likeness and our image. And let them have dominion. And God wants us to be just like him. Now when I say just like him, I'm not saying that we're ever going to operate in the deity of God. We're never going to be omnipresent, praise the Lord. I'm never going to be, I'm not very going to be everywhere at once. Hallelujah. I don't want to be. It's not my responsibility to know every hair on everybody's head like he does. Every sparrow that falls. I'm not all powerful. I'm not all understanding. I'm not all omnipresent. You know, I'm not. He, 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 he's that for us. But I want to be like him. I want to be like Abba Father in his character, in his nature, in his personality, in his love, his joy, his peace, his long suffering, his gentleness, his goodness. His faithfulness, his meekness, his temperance. I want to be just like God. Now, I can't be that in myself. But he's given me what I need, right? He's given me the new birth. He, he, I'm born again of the incredible seed of the word of life. I, I've, I've got the spirit of Christ in me. I've got the spirit of the Father in me whereby I cry my Father. I've got the Holy Ghost who came to exalt Christ and lead me into all truth. And, and the Father, he, he can't lie. We looked at that this morning. So open your Bibles once again to the book of James chapter 1. And, and, and you understand these are the 12 tribes scattered abroad. And yet they're confused about who God is. Now they had all the old covenant, but the old covenant, it was a revelation of God, but not like the revelation of the new. The revelation of the Father is revealed to us in the, in the face of Jesus Christ. It's revealed to us. I told you it had to be God. When I got born again, nobody led me to the Lord. I was committing suicide and the fear of God fell on me on my 19th birthday as I went to slice my wrist. And I fell to my knees because I knew I was going to hell. And I cried out to Jesus. He came rushing in and I just fell in love with Jesus head over heels. I grabbed my little military green Bible and I devoured for three years Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 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 And I discovered who Jesus was. So as I began to read the epistles of Paul and Peter, and you understand by the Spirit, I've memorized a third of the New Testament. I've memorized ten books of the Bible. I can quote them to you right now, but let me tell you something. I would have never understood those books without having a revelation of Jesus Christ. Woo! It says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace will be multiplied. I said not added or subtracted or divided, but multiplied. How many of you love multiplication when it comes to the revelation? Multiplication. A revelation. Say multiplication of revelation. You know, when Christ who is our life, we got to, and, 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 and he says to the 12 tribes, do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err. Do not, don't make this mistake. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Every good gift, every perfect gift 
Well, I think the greatest gifts are our, of course, I told you the three things that every believer must have. They must have the new birth. They must have the Holy Ghost. And they must have the word of God hidden in their heart. He, you know, the psalmist said, I've hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He, even in Psalms, it says, my son, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them. <laughs> life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. It'll quicken your, your it'll quicken your body. As it quickens your body, you might want to shout. You might want to dance. You might want to run. It's okay here. Just be free in Jesus' name as long as it's in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, but what if somebody pops up that has the devil? Don't worry, I'll cast it out. Amen. Oh, you'll cast it out. It don't take no hours and hours and hours to set people free. I've got some wild stories of demon-possessed people. One guy who ate his fingers, drank human blood. And I cast the devils out of them as a baby Christian. The devils came out in less than five minutes screaming in different voices. Led them to the Lord and led them into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How could that happen, Pastor? But I'd just been abiding in Christ and he had been abiding in me. And when you abide in me and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will. And what are we going to ask for? We ain't going to ask for big houses and fancy Cadillacs and expensive stuff, though God will bless you. We're going to ask God set the captives free. Break every bondage. Drive out the darkness. Save the lost souls. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. Heal this sick. Freely you have received. Freely give. <laughs> Woo! And we're on our way. God's at work in you. And there, there, there are times and seasons of refreshing. And I believe we are coming into a time of tremendous refreshing. I am so excited about it. I am so enthused about it. God is about to do some awesome things. So he says, my brethren, he said, he, 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 look, do not err, my beloved brethren. So I told you in the garden before Adam and his wife ever sinned, the devil was messing with their head. Well, if the devil could mess with the head of Adam and his wife who were made in the, in, the, in the image of God and who walked with God, what do you think he's going to try to do to you and me? He's going to mess with your head. Even though you're born again, fill the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues. He's going to try to mess with your head. Well, don't let him mess with your head. I like what Kenneth Hagin used to say. He said, hey, birds can fly over your head, but don't let them build a nest in your hair. Don't let the devil mess with your head. Just tell him to skedaddle in the name of Jesus. It is written. It is written. It is written. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from all the destructions. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Listen, in whom there is no verminous, not a shell of turning. I'll tell you right now. So you can flip this thing on its head and you can say this way. Then every bad gift, every evil gift comes from below, from the devil. In whom there is no verminous, not a shadow of turning. It's full of darkness. Cancer is not a gift from God. Hello. Honestly, broken bones are not a gift of God. Pastor Mike, you mean God will instantly heal broken bones? How many of you know he will? I broke my foot the fifth time I slammed it down. It was completely normal. Sandy came in here with a broken ankle, healed instantly. She came in with a broken wrist, healed instantly. Isn't that right, Sandy? It was your foot that was broken, excuse me. And it was instantly healed. I mean, you all know Mary Rockwell. She has a tremendous testimony. She said she came here and both of her wrists were in cast. And she said, Pastor Mike, you laid hands on me and you said in the name of, and it ain't me, it's Jesus. 
I, I, I could, I, I, if I laid my hand on a sick fly, I couldn't get it healed. It's not me, it's Jesus. But anyways, she said, you prayed over me and a prophetic word came out and said, your wrists are healed. You're okay, you're normal. She said, I went home and I had a bunch of painting to do. I stripped my two cast off and she said I painted for hours on end with no pain in my wrist. And she had fallen and broken both of her wrists. Give Jesus a hand clap. Every wonderful and good gift. You know what? I know that I know. Now, we Thursday nights, we've been teaching on moving in the Holy Ghost. We've been teaching on the utterance gifts, the revelation gifts, and the power gifts. But I know there is so much more. Visions, dreams, all of the, I mean, I don't, I don't seek for signs and wonders. I just seek God and they come. All, the audible voice of God. About probably more than a dozen times in my life, the audible voice of God. Well, what did he say? Pastor Mike will read my books. <laughs> Saved my life over and over. Told me what to do. Told me what to write. Told me what to preach. I haven't tried to get a sermon together for probably over 30 years. It just comes many times in my dreams I see myself preaching. Well, Pastor Mike, how come you're not further? I discovered something. A tree can only, should only grow as high as its root system. It took Jesus, it took, it took Jesus 30 years from the time he was born until the Father said he was ready. It took John the Baptist over 30 years. And you know Jesus, I mean, he, he, he never got out of the will of the Father. And John the Baptist was filled with the Spirit from his mother's womb. And it took Moses 40 years. I, I, I'm over my 40 years. I'm a late bloomer, but I'm coming. We got to get our roots deep. Oh, you all say roots, don't you? We say roots. We got to get our roots or our roots deep. <laughs> we got to just do it. We just got to go deeper in God. So every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom there is no verbal or shadow, shadow turning of his own will beget he us with the word of truth. That's where we finish this morning. How did we get born again? By the word of truth. How do you get free? By the word of truth. I, I was just thinking, you know, I know it's really weird. You know, people, people say, well, I, I don't, I, I, I don't want to be a chicken. I want to be an eagle. Therefore, I'm an eagle. You know, you wanna, the world is saying this. I don't want to be a man. Therefore, I'm a woman. How many know that don't work? But you know what? The problem is that God has made us to be eagles. If you're born again, Washed in the blood, name written down in heaven. God don't want you to be a chicken with your wings clipped. God don't want you to be pecking on the ground. God wants you to be lifting your eyes towards the heaven. Get up there in the wind. Lock your winds in and let the current take you as high. They say eagles can go up to 30,000 feet high. They lock their wings in. I did a whole teaching on eagles one time. Amazing. And God uses these illustrations for our benefit. And God, I'm telling you, the church is about to mount up with wings of eagles. We're about to run and not be weary. We're, we're about to uh, leap over the walls and run through a troop. We're about, I tell you, them, and, and I, just, I just saw that this morning by a revelation about our African-American brothers and sisters who are locked into the inner cities and it looks like they're victims of nothing but crime and drugs and immorality. And the Lord said to me, he said, I have strategically placed them there that when my fire comes, those people will not be ashamed and they will go for it. And we had four precious people this morning, uh, two brothers and two sisters, African Americans, and they were from the D.C. area, right? Baltimore area. And, 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 and when, when I got that one brother, and I couldn't help it, he was in a walker. Did you see he walked out without his walker? He carried it. I just grabbed him and I threw his lot. I just, you know, that boldness hit you, and I grabbed his, his walker and I threw it on the ground. I said, you don't need that. Come on, brother, let's march. He took off. You know what? Those two, the three other people, without me telling them, they jumped up there and grabbed a hold of her, his back, grabbed a hold of his legs, grabbed a hold of his belly, and I, I could walk away because they were doing the job. That's the kind of people they are. And we're going to see that. We're gonna, I'm telling you, we're, we're, God purposely put us here for a reason. 
and God is going to bring him in. They're going to get ignited and they're going to take it out and they're going to come back and they're going to get it out and they're going to come back. The Lord told me years ago, it's like bees coming to a beehive. I purposely went out and bought myself a beehive this spring. And, and, and I'll tell you what, them bees got stingers because I experienced it the other day. They got up in my suit. I was checking on them, and I was completely enclosed, but there was a little hole. And one got up there, and I found out they can communicate by some mysterious thing of nature. And they began to communicate, and they all began to crawl up into my bonnet. And I know what it means having a bee in your bonnet. If you didn't see me two weeks ago, my whole, did you see me, Pam, when my whole chin was swallowed up like this, you know? But praise God, I survived it. But we're like those bees, and we got stingers. And you better watch out, devil, because we're going to sting you. <laughs> so, the father of lights, and we're begotten of his will. He designed us, he created us, he made us, he formed us to be who we're going to be in him. Now you understand the minute you got born again, the DNA of Jesus is in you. You got all the potential to be all that God has called you to be. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. We're just scratching the surface. And, and, and that, that rivers of living water, that inner man. I told you last night, I had two visitations in my dreams. In the one, I was with five different groups of people dressed in different styles, preaching different languages, and I, I was preaching with them. It was mysterious. Five different groups of people preaching in different languages, Dressed in different outfits. It was strange. But then all of a sudden I was on a desert floor and everything's dead. You got some cactuses. You got some scrub uh, brush. And all of a sudden the Lord said, look down. And I could see below me by the Holy Spirit about 100 feet down the largest never-ending pool of fresh water you ever could see. He said, son, all you got to do is dig deeper and it will come exploding up. And that desert will become an oasis. And I know this world may seem like it's a desert, but you just got to dig deeper. I thought you said, Pastor, you got to reach higher. Yeah, you got to reach higher. I thought you got to spread your nets further. Yeah, you got to spread your nets further. You got to do all three things. <laughs> you got to reach higher. You got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And Paul said, I have not apprehended that for which I've been apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things, forgetting those things that are behind. Now listen, when they say is forget, I'm not talking about forgetting your testimonies because David said, I have more wisdom than all my teachers for thy, thy testimonies are my meditation. He said, that testimonies. What testimony? It's the test you overcame. You all been through a test. You got a test, but you got to overcome, and then you get the money. It becomes the money when you overcome by faith. Your test. I'm in a test, Pastor Mike. Well, we're always going to be in a test. I'm looking for the money. The testimony. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. Let me tell you how he healed me, how he delivered me, how he provided for me, how he protected me, how he rescued me, how he redeemed me, how he loved me, how he gave himself for me. I, I tell people, I'm, I'm not against classes of trying to teach people how to share Christ, but the greatest way you have to share Christ is draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you, and he'll put in your mouth what you need to tell him about how wonderful God is. And, and these, these 12 tribes are messed up because they, they're, they're, they're messing up. They're thinking, they, they don't understand that God is the giver of every good gift. Well, let's go a little bit deeper here. No, notice what it says here in verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man, say every man, be swift to hear. Swift to hear. Hear what? What the Spirit is saying. What is God saying? What, a, what is the Holy Ghost saying? Th Thursday night when Brother Sam was here, I, I got done teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. It just flows. You don't have to work up the gifts. It just flows. I look at him, and I saw in my heart that he drives a big box truck. 
And I saw that he goes to Baltimore and he's going to be going to D.C. And I told him, I said, I, and, and, and he acknowledged it. He said, yeah, I'm not. He said, I do go to Baltimore. I said, God's going to divinely protect you. Oh, Pastor Mike, he did it today. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. And right before I had an accident, God said, wake up. And he said, I woke up. Otherwise, it would have been a terrible accident. I said, well, God is going to begin the word of knowledge to flow in you. The word of wisdom, just like the gifts of the discerning of spirits, brother, are going to flow through you. And you've used wisdom and zip the lip until God says do. Sometimes God won't even tell you. I see people have demonic things going on. And the Lord just say, just pray for them. Don't even say a thing. Just pray for them. Just pray for them. And, and when the time is right, and sometimes, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you. Sometimes I'm not the one that God wants to use to bring the deliverance. Sometimes I'm just the one preparing the ground by prayer. And God is going to send someone else to bring that deliverance. You know why? That God in all things might be glorified. None of us are superheroes. There's only one hero. His name is Jesus. <laughs> Even the Holy Ghost ain't the hero. It's Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost didn't come to talk about himself. So notice. Wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear. And in what? Slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Then notice what it says. Wherefore. Listen. Because now we got to move. We got to move. We got to hurry up. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move. We got to get up and go. We got to begin to believe and take a hold. We need to move, 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 Nancy. We need to begin to move, 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 Nancy. Move, 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 Nancy. Notice what God's going to, how God's going to do that. We're for lay apart all filthiness and all subfluity of naughtiness. Lay it all aside. All that Hollywood promises us and the world promises us, there's nothing in it. You go take a bite and it's nothing but sand. It's just a mirage. They don't have nothing to offer us. Nothing. Listen, I did what the world did. I had what the world had. And, and, and I was miserable. And it was killing me. Pete was there, weren't you, Pete? They ain't got nothing to compete with, do they, Pete? <laughs> Not next to Jesus. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and honest. And receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Save, the Greek word means to be made whole. Your mind, I'm convinced Jesus had 100% use of his brain. People don't know the power of the word when it's meditated upon. You know, I told you back in about 1995, my wife and I went out to Ohio to a conference and I, I, we didn't have a TV. My kids never had TV in their house and we just, they, they didn't miss it. And we just tried to raise them in God, you know, and... And uh, so somebody told us about a tremendous camp meeting out there. And so we went out there and I was really disappointed. Uh, just all they did was kept on pulling money, pulling money, pulling money from the people. And, and I just don't see that in Jesus. I'm not judging nobody's heart, but I don't see Jesus living high in a hog like a king. I just didn't see him. So I want to be like Jesus. I'd rather take that wealth. I'd rather do what John Osteen did. And John used to come and preach in our Bible college. You know what John Osteen did? John Osteen lived in a very nice uh, condominium. It wasn't fancy, but it was nice. He had 10,000 members. And he took all of that wealth that came to him and he used it to feed the poor and take care of the needy. That's why years ago I used to work with Franklin Graham and I love Franklin because that's what Franklin did. He would just, you know, just, I think even more so than his dad, he had a heart. Good, the Samaritan purse just, just gave. So anyways, after the second day, I just couldn't handle it no more. So I just, not judging him, I just couldn't handle five, six offerings in one service, trying to pull every penny out of those people. I just couldn't handle it. And so we left and on the way home, the Lord dealt with me. Notice, God didn't talk to me about the man and his group. Group, he talked to me about me. That's how God works. If God is always telling you what's wrong with someone else, I guarantee it ain't God. It's the devil because he's the accuser of the brethren. God talked to me. He said, son, said, who are you talking about? I said, well, you know. He said, you're nothing but a favorite 
scripture preacher. I was shocked. I said, I'm a favorite scripture preacher. He said, yeah, you have all your favorite scriptures. He said, you don't know my word. I said, I don't know your word. He said, you don't know my word. Well, I knew, I knew quite a number of the, you know, a couple thousand scriptures probably, but I said, you don't know my word. I said, oh, Lord, I repent. So I went home, and in those days, I had 21 people on my staff, and I told them, I said, I'm just going to give myself to the word of God in prayer. That's all I'm going to do. And so I took the book of Ephesians, and I began, I didn't want to just memorize it. I wanted to get it in my heart. I was getting headaches, terrible headaches, terrible headaches. And then I got through the book of Ephesians. It took me maybe about a month. And then, and then I took the book of Galatians, and I memorized the book of Galatians. And I'm just, you know, just, and I got into to the second book uh, into the book of Philippians I hit the second chapter of Philippians I could take you where I was standing in my sunroom over at the old house we built in 1988 and all of a sudden my room disappeared now I'm not looking I'm not trying to get something for God to do something the room disappeared and it's nothing but a gigantic body of water never-ending just not a ripple on it and I look up in a clear blue sky and I saw coming out of the heavens a big old shining crystal clear raindrop coming down slow motion. Slow. I saw it. I'm watching. I'm going, whoa. It comes down. I was speechless. It hit the water and ripples went out. Went, and then it was gone. I thought, what in the world was that? And then I picked up my Bible and I discovered where it would take me seven, eight, nine days to memorize a chapter. I could memorize it in an hour. Now I began to just shove the word in and shove the word in, but I got caught up again. Bible college, Christian school, radio station, broadcasting network, radio stations more than one, traveling and preaching. And I stayed in the word, but I didn't devour it like I should have to where it would, see, we got a job that's got to get done. This, this thing can't be accomplished by some fancy preaching. It's got to be by the power of God. I mean, the thunderings and the lightnings of heaven have got to come and cause the inhabitants of this earth to tremble in their shoes at who God is. And guess who God's going to use to do this with? You and me. You and me. Pastor, you mean I've got to give myself to the word of God like that? No, I'm not saying that. But God always, you know, how many have ever pounded a nail? Any of you guys ever pounded a nail, a big spike nail? How many know there's a tip on that nail and it takes all the pressure? That's what the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers for. We're supposed to take the blunt pressure, work our way in, and overcome for y'all can enjoy the fruits of the land. Praise the Lord. Y'all want to enjoy the fruits of the land? Okay, we got to hurry up here. Notice what it says here in verse 22. But be a doers of the word and not hearers only. Do the word. Do the word. And, and anything that you've been taught, anything you've been trained, if I've taught you anything contrary to the teachings of Jesus, just spit it out. Like you would when you're eating watermelon, you spit out the seeds. Just spit it out. Eat the hay, leave the sticks. Or if you ever ate fish, I know we did a lot of fish eating when I was a kid, pan fish, crappies and, 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 you know, and all kinds of fish and bluegills. And we always had bread there in order to get the bones out of our throat. Keep the bread there to get the bones out. Amen. You don't let those bones get in your throat. But for if any be hear the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man who beholdeth his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Now the looking glass, and I could take you to many scriptures tonight, but we're not going to. The looking glass is the book. You want to see who you are in Jesus? There it is. This is who I am. And it can't just be a confession it's got to become so real to you to where it becomes flesh and blood. Let's not love in word only, but deed in action. It's got to be manifested in your flesh. You've got to get it so deep in your heart, it will manifest. What good is joy if it don't manifest on your face? <laughs> what good is, 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 is the strength of God if it don't get in your feet? 
I mean, what good, what good is it if it don't get in your hands and cause you lifting holy hands? What good is it if it doesn't bring out a, a, a whoop or a whee or a wow or hallelujah? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's like waves. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. For if it be hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who beholdeth his natural face in the glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his, notice, his way. He goes the way of the flesh and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But, say but. But, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of what? Liberty. Liberty. We have the liberty of the sons of God. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage, it says in Galatians. It says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whosoever. Say, I'm a whosoever. Whoso looketh into the perfect law and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful doer, but a, a, a hearer, but a doer of the work, this man or woman will be blessed in their deeds. So I told you what happened to me when I got born again. I was not around any Christians. I was raised in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic uh, denomination, but I didn't know much. My parents didn't go to church because my mom and dad, my dad had been married before. His wife ran off on him after three months of marriage. He met my, wife, uh, my mom a couple years later when she was 16, convinced her they got married. And the priest told him that our ki us kids were bastards. We are going to hell. That's what the Catholic priest told my mom, and she was going to go to hell. As a matter of fact, I couldn't lead my mom to the Lord for years. I didn't know this until one day the Lord told me, leave your mom alone. Stop preaching at her. Stop it. So I did. I, I just stopped preaching at her. I read, led my brothers and my sister and my dad to the Lord, but... One day we're in the laundry room in the basement. My wife and I was home visiting from Bible college, and she began to weep. And she said, Mike, I can't get saved. I can't get saved. I took her in my arms, and I said, Mom, why? She's just a little lady. Her name was Shirley. I said, why, Mom? And then she told me what the Catholic priest said. I said, that's a life in the pit of hell. I said, it's, I said Christ died for our sins. I said, you couldn't help what happened in those days. You didn't even know Jesus. And I led her to Jesus that day. I led her to Jesus that day. And the day that she died, she told my sister because they gave her bad medication. And she had asthma problems and they switched her medication out and she thought she couldn't breathe. It was, it was squeezing her heart and it killed her. But she told my sister Debbie, holding her hand, squeezing it, and said, it's okay, Debbie, I've got peace. I've got peace. I'm all right. She didn't die frantic. She didn't die confused. She didn't die. You know that's a sign of God's hand upon her. No, it wasn't God's will for her to die then, but I know where she's at, praise the Lord. But looking into the perfect law of liberty, continuing there, and don't be a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work. So when I got born again, I read in my Bible before I ever went to a Pentecostal church lifting holy hands, and I began to lift holy hands. You just do it. Why? Because when the time, when, 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 because the Bible says to do it. And I began to dance, because the Bible, I found a dance before the Lord. David danced before the Lord with all of his might. I was, I was basically New Testament, but I would flip through it to see what else was in there. And I came across where they shouted to God, I'm in my barracks in the Navy. I'm dancing. I'm lifting my hands. And I'm shouting before I got the revelation that it says, don't forsake the assembling of your together as, as the manner of some is. And so much more as you see the day approaching. But when I saw that, when I saw that it said, you need to get together, I said, oh, I've got to find my place, myself a place to go and I found a little Pentecostal church and I got in that little Pentecostal church on Adak Alaska and I found out I was more wild than those Pentecostal people because I had been doing the word I've been doing I wasn't going like that you know like get happy <laughs> praise the Lord I love you, Jesus. No, God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. And you, you know what? If, they, if, if you were paid by the amount of calories you burned, you'd starve to death. Does that make sense? <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, you ought to have some motion. You ought to have some zeal. You ought to have some excitement. You ought to have some shout. You ought to have some dance. I mean, you ought to have some prophetic words, some tongues and interpretations. I mean, you should. Tell somebody, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> if any man among you seem to be religious and breath not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Now, I just want to go through, because I told you the word Father is used over 380 times in the New Testament. Jesus talked about the Father over 100 times in the Gospel of John, because God wants us to be just like him. And we can't do it in ourselves. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Word of God. We need Jesus. We need the Spirit of the Father. So we're not bragging about ourselves. You know, I know people that say, Well, Pastor Mike, we're saved by grace through faith. You know, we're, saved by, we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. Read the next one. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works. The good works ain't coming from me. It's coming from Jesus on the inside. You, you, you know, it's just like an automobile. Hey, you may have a nice real automobile, but if that automobile gets up and goes, it's because the engine under the hood. Amen. You know who's under my hood? His name is Jesus. Yeah. And if you take him out of the, under, from underneath the hood, there ain't nothing there. So notice, I just want to read a couple of scriptures here. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They're going to glorify your Father which is in heaven. When my wife and I were in that crackle barrel, what, three, two Novembers ago, and there's a woman laying on the floor dead. She's probably 300 pounds. She's dead. She's gone. The nurse is there. They're waiting for the meat wagon. And the compassion of God moved on me. And tears began to roll down my cheeks. And I said, I got to do something. Excuse me. I'm a pastor. Please let me in. Let me in. Got through the crowd. Got down. Put my hand on her cold, dead face. And I prayed a simple prayer. Because I had been abiding in Jesus. And I commanded her. And didn't get loud. Didn't have to get loud. I just said, you spirit of death. I command you to come out of her now. And right away the nurse said, she's got a pulse, she's got a pulse. And that woman laying on the floor took her hand, reached up and squeezed my hand, thanking me. And I knew what my job was done. And I got up and walked out of the crowd with my wife and I never told them who I was and I didn't wait for the newspaper people. All they know was somebody prayed in the name of Jesus and raised her from the dead. <laughs> Woo! Joanna told you how my wife and, and her walked into a, a, what, what long, Longhorn Steakhouse where a woman died. Her bowels had released. And she didn't give all the details. She's laying there dead. Her bowels released. And her and my wife began to call. What's her name? What's her name? And they told her, hey, Susie, whatever it was. Come back, Susie. Come back. Come back. And then all of a sudden her eyes winked and said, and, and Joanna heard it and said, she's back, she's back, Susie's back. And she opened up her eyes and she was back. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. It says that they may see your good works. So the next time that Joanna and my wife went back to that steakhouse, they said, oh, there's the woman that raised that lady from the dead. And, they, and the, the food's on us. And they, they fed them for free. Kind of hard to turn that down, ain't it? <laughs> I know they told him it was Jesus, but I, I, I don't think Jesus would mind if I eat your food. The laborer is worthy of his reward, right? Yeah. Matthew 5, 45. That you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he has made his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. He, he, God, God is so good. We are children of the Father. Matthew 5, 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now the word perfect there means mature. Be, be mature. Be no longer children. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the we us, the mature sons of God. Now if God tells me I can be mature, then I can be mature. God said I can be mature. Woo! 
God said, I don't have to act like a... Now, you've got to become like little children in, 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 in your, your, your freedom to worship God and your freedom to obey God. And your, I remember one day I came home from church and my little girl, uh, 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 Stephanie, was up and she was probably about three years old. She was up on the, on the top of the stairs and she says, Daddy! And she jumped and here she comes. You know I caught my little girl. Now, I wouldn't want her to do that again to me. She ain't so little anymore, you know. But you know what? She, she just had childlike faith. Here I come, Daddy. She wasn't trying to tempt me. She was just so excited. I think we ought to be excited about the Father. I really do. Matthew 6, 1. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. There's many, many. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We ought to pray that hallowed be thy name, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your goodness. Uh, Matthew 7, 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will you, your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? He is the giver of good gifts. I, I'm not, and you know what? We don't seek materialistical things, but God gives them to us. I'm not lying to you. God just, he just, and you know, when you really get close to God, you'll be, use wisdom, because you won't just pray any stupid prayer of wanting something. And I, I'll just share a story. My wife and I, we just got back from Germany. And right before we got back from Germany, this was back when uh, Mike was uh, 37 now, right, Mike? He's in the link room. Back in, what was that? That was 1982. We just got back from Germany. And uh, I didn't have no money or nothing. And we got off the airplane and I said, you know, honey, right now what's in my heart, say what's in my heart. Go by what's in your heart, not your head. It came out of my mouth. I said, I just need one of them big old Buicks, like a boat. That's what I said. I just need a big old Buick, just a big old car. I don't know why I said it. I just, it came out. For, you know, if you're, when you're walking in the spirit, things will just come out. And you go, wow. And I said it. And we got to Kathy's grandma's house, uh, Viola. Her phone rang the next morning. And this woman gets on the phone. I said, I, I heard your, your, uh, your, your granddaughters just got home with her husband, the preacher. I said, yeah. Well, we're so embarrassed, but we, we just feel like I, we're embarrassed. What? Well, here, let me put mic on. So she put the phone. Hello? Well, I, I just feel so embarrassed. I said, well, don't be embarrassed. I, I just, my husband and I, we, I said, tell me. I had to work to get out. Well, we have an old Buick that's sitting underneath a tree, and the tree's been just dumping on it for years, but it runs, and we can get it inspected. What do you think? I said, that's God. That's God. So we went, we got our old junk of a Buick. It was big and it was and it was it was big and it rode like a boat. So I began to travel and preach at these folk gospel businessmen's meetings with my testimonies, because you know back in them days they were popular. And one day we, we did a meeting way up north somewhere in the Poconos, I think it was. It was late at night, and I'm trying to get home and the engine light came on. And I, I should have had enough wisdom. I should have said, Oh, I need to pull over and put water in. I didn't put any water in it. I mean, you, know, you can't drive an engine with no water in it. The water pump went out, and I just drove it, and I drove it, and, it, and, I, and, and I'm speaking life over it now. Kathy, she's laying her hand on the dash. Run, run, and get us home. Run, run, run. And it, blah, 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 blah. And it took hours to get home. Finally, we pulled in, and I tell you, that engine was so red cherry hot, it would steam poured out, and it sat. That was it. We're sitting in this old Buick. I said, oh, well, honey, I said, this car did its job. I said, now we need something different. Really? I said, yeah, you know what? We got tents. We're going to get tents, and we're going to evangelize. And God did give us five tents. And we used to put our tents up in carnivals and fairs. And as we'd preach, people would be falling under the power, walking by the tent. And the church of 400 got started up in Huntington Fair out of one of those tent meetings with a buddy, a friend of mine, Sparky Price. But anyways, so we're sitting in this whole Buick, and the engine is still, you know, tinging. And the end, you know how when the engine gets real hot, it goes clink, clink. It's, it's tinging away, you know, trying to cool off and I said honey 
take a hold of my hand. I said, I'm going to pray. What are you going to pray? I said, Father, I need a Ford pickup truck. I said, I need, now you, you can ask my wife. I said, huh? I said, Lord, we need a Ford pickup truck. Lord, I wanted to have a 302 engine. And, and now remember, I'm abiding in Jesus. I'm abiding, and this is what's coming up out of me by the Holy Ghost. I said, I want a Ford pickup truck, a 302 engine. I want it to be a black pickup truck, Lord. And, and I want it to be an automatic. And I want it to have a cap on the back. Now, Lord, we thank you for that Ford pickup truck with a 302 engine with a cap on the back automatic. Lord, we thank you. So we both just begin praying something. We're just praising God, worshiping God. So the next morning we had to get up and, one of the, and, and Sparky Price was using my tent up there in the Huntington Fair. And I was supposed to go up there. I wasn't really preaching, but I was supposed to be with him that morning. And so we get up early in the morning, and, and, and Biola, Kathy's grandma, she was a Pentecostal Holy Ghost woman, and said, uh, Brother Mike, she always called me Brother, Brother Mike, uh, the neighbor said, you can use their brand new car. I said, wow, that's wonderful. Really? Yeah, it's a brand new car. So we traveled in, in style. Now, we got to this big old tent meeting. We didn't tell anybody what was going on. We pulled in with a brand new car. Got out. The meeting was wonderful. God showed up. You know, must have been three, 400 people there. Everybody's hugging us, you know. And afterwards, this, this couple walked up to us who were farmers. And this brother walked up to us and said, Brother Mike, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I said, what? Well, I just believe that God wants me to give you something. I said, well, don't hesitate. What does God want you to give me? Well, I don't know. You got a brand new car. I said, don't worry about the brand new car. So I've got a vehicle in my heart that my wife and I, during a whole service, we felt in our heart we were supposed to give you this vehicle. I said, okay, can we go look at it? He said, yeah, could you follow us now? I said, let's go take a look. So we got to his farm, and there's the barn and the far, farmhouse. And, 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 he, and I said, where is it at? It's around behind. So we came around the back of the farm, and there was sitting my black Ford pickup truck with a 302 engine automatic with the cap on the back. <laughs> and it was only about eight hours later when I got it. But I'm telling you right now about the Holy Ghost. God will give us what we want if we seek him. You know what? Thank God for that Ford pickup truck. It did what it needed to do for a number of years. What I want to see is a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. We've seen it happen, Pam. People going by this building. That's how Sandy came in. God convicted her and brought her in here weeping. Repented and she got right. We've seen it through the years. But I want to see him by the thousands. I want to see him coming in by the thousands, Pete. Praise the Lord. And I want to see God raise you all up for you can change their diapers. Yeah, I think you could do good that, that, amen. Well, give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Thank you, Lord. So you can stop recording. I, I, we're supposed to be like our Heavenly Father. Really, God doesn't want, he said, we, people limited the Holy One of Israel. We want to stop limiting what God can do. And we don't mean to, but we lean to the carnality of our mind, and we don't even know it. But our programs and, 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 and all of our agendas and all of our motives limits what God can do. When, when I told the Lord, and, and you know, I used to be like that. We were a seeker-friendly church. I had at one time 700 people. Pam was here as a young girl, and I got caught up in it. And God did move some, but you know what? The Lord just told me, he said, this ain't me. I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, my church is built on the power of the Spirit. Not built on programs and not that you can't have different departments doing certain things, but he said, I want the power of God. I want the Holy Ghost. I, I, want, I want when people come in sick, they walk out healed. When they walk in blind, they walk out seeing. When they walk in demon uh, oppressed, they walk out delivered. And so I, I just put all my eggs in one basket since about 1999. Yeah, and I've just been waiting. <laughs> I've just been waiting for all those eggs to hatch. <laughs> and I believe we're right on the edge of it. We're going to see a mighty hatching. <laughs> Some people would call it revival. I call it a hatching. 
Uh, God's people are going to, you know, them are chicks in his eggs. They just got to break out of them. I tell you, there's a, there's a big breaking forth coming. Amen. Amen. Where's my lovely wife? Oh, she's running the radio station. Oh, I'd like to have some dancing music tonight. I don't know why. I just still feel like dancing, Pete. I just, <laughs> I just still feel like dancing. Woo, don't you, Sherry. I saw that during worship, man. You had to dance all over you, man. <laughs> Woo, you had to dance all over you. Amen.